love that, that aha moment, you know, or that, that, um, you know, that feeling of people being heard or giving someone a space to kind of express those vulnerabilities and those concerns, um, and then helping them get past it. So it's, it's more about that than, than actually the industry this time. You're listening to Relish This, the Purpose Marketing Podcast. Here's your host, Stu Swinefort. Hey, everybody. Stu here. My guest today is Susie Bonson, and she is the founder of Apples and Arrows Sales, which is this really cool you know, new business that she's founded to try and help um, people kind of navigate marketing and branding and sales and the intersection of all of those things. Um, and Susie and I met a couple years ago, I think, um, when she was working for the SBDC. So they're a local nonprofit, uh, part of a bigger organization. So she was working for Boulder SBDC and was putting together classes for um, local businesses and had me come on as a speaking guest. And it was really great to reconnect with Susie. She's an amazing person. She has a lot of of great insight and information about marketing and sales and how those two things overlap. And we just talked about a whole bunch of stuff that I think you're going to find really fun and interesting. Susie's just great. I hope you enjoy the show. Here we go. Hey, Susie, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, Stu. Thanks for having me. Well, I'm really excited to have you on the show. Um, We met back when you were with the SBDC in Boulder. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And you were doing some really cool stuff to bring, uh, kind of webinars to people during the uh, pandemic and had me on as a guest a couple times, I think. People love you. Oh, well, thanks. People love you. You really did such a great job. Yeah. I appreciate that. No, it was super fun. It was really great to kind of start working on my my teaching chops a little bit. Um, and, And that was something that the SBDC was doing a very good job of. But you have moved on to a really cool new business that you started up from scratch called Apple and Arrow Sales, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's actually my third business. Um, I used to own a marketing and design agency on Pearl Street called Launchpad Interactive. And then I had a business called Turn Left that was um, a fractional CMO business where I'd go and help people with their tech stack and, um, you know, basically help them to assess their internal and external resources and get sales and marketing to work together. And mm-hmm. then kind of pop out like Mary Poppins of marketing, I used to call myself. <laughs> nice. And that was really, you know, that was really a blast. And, um, you know, I've done this dance of, you know, marketing leadership and sales, and then, you know, having my own thing. And I really, I just love the entrepreneurial spirit. So Apple and Arrow Sales is is um, my newest venture, and it's it's really about helping empower people to price appropriately, to scale their business, um, to evaluate their sales strategies and their you know and their brand, and um, help them you know to kind of live that life that they want to live. It's it's fun to be at a place where I can you know, make choices to work with people, um, that, you know, I want to see the effect. I want to see them, you know, um, enjoy their life and have great clients and, and, um, you know, bring some good in the world. Well, tell, tell me a little bit more about what you, what you do there and how, who's, you know, who you're looking for over, over at, at Apple and Arrow. Yeah. So it's, it's interesting. I, um, I created two, online courses. One's called um, Badass Branding, which is a like a DIY branding class. And and then the second is called um, No Apology Pricing. And, and I originally started thinking that I would, this time I would work with women. And my brand is like this, you know, this magenta and black, like kind of in your face, like poppy, you know, I'm going to work. Um, I'm going to work to, to help empower women, but, you know, during the pandemic and, um, you know, like these last few months, particularly I've had some people come to me that, you know, they, they've been in business. They're not women necessarily like, you know, but just need help. And so I look for people that want to grow that, um, that maybe they have something really great that they want 
to bring in the world, whether it's a service or product, but they, they just, um, you know, they're kind of lacking the, you know, that sales background or that marketing kind of know-how. Um, I love to work with people that, um, that need to work with an agency or they're trying to build their marketing and, and brand platform and mm -hmm. work with them before they start to kind of make sure that they have done their market research. They've done their, you know, due diligence. They know who their target is so that they can be in more control and a better client to people like you, you know, like to, to agencies or freelancers, um, because they've done that legwork. They've thought, they've thought things through and they know where they want to go. You know, they want to, they know where they want to take their business. So it's kind of an open book. My, my background, I do, I did a lot with, um, technical companies. Um, and I've worked with, um, you know, everything from natural food to green building to, um, you know, to startups, I've, I've consulted hundreds of entrepreneurs, like over the, the course of my career. So, um, I love those heart based companies, those passion, those passion brands. Um, and there's people that are at a tipping point, like maybe they've been in business for a decade and they're ready to scale and they just don't even realize that they're selling something that they, you know, that doesn't have high margins, or maybe it doesn't right. have, you know, like they didn't even want to sell it in the first place, but they ended up going down this path of, you know, that's where the money came in. And so yeah. helping them like kind of readjust is the, the apple for this brand represents like what you want. And that might be, you know, like more time to travel or t spend time with your kids or, you know, take care of your aging parents or make more money or scale or whatever. And the arrow represents alignment and focus, um, you know, really that direction. So yeah, it's a fun, it's a fun poppy poppy brand. But I think at this point in my career, I just really want to help people and, and uh, bring, like I said, bring some, uh, love that, that aha moment, you know, or that, that, um, you know, that feeling of people being heard or giving someone a space to kind of express those vulnerabilities and those concerns, um, and then helping them get past it. So it's, it's more about that than, than actually the industry this time. Yeah, that's great. I I think that, you know, the quicker that we can all get to being able to do the things that we love and, and, and the, you know, just have those kinds of, of employment or entrepreneurial opportunities to get, get us excited. Um, you know, that's where we do our best work is just in those spaces where we're, where we're really passionate about it. And it's, it sounds like you've, you've found yours. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and, and I think that, you know, particularly now, I think that people are realizing like the, you know, that the world has changed on us and, and, um, you know, kind of got a little bit, um, pear shaped and a lot of people worked really, really hard. Um, you know, they may have, you know, like if they had a business, they may have survived, they may have grown, um, they may have, um, you know, gone off to do their own thing and like kind of realize that life's so short and precious and, you know, like, and fragile that like, it's like, it's time to, you know, really know what, you, you know, kind of be clear on what you want and, and go for it. So I see exciting, exciting times, you know, kind of like, you know, the flowers that grow after the burn. And, um, you know, I, I, I dig that and, um, yeah, why not? Yeah, exactly. I, one thing that you mentioned that I, that I've kind of latched onto in the last several years is the idea that we can all kind of lead with purpose and you don't have to have a, you know, an eco brand or, um, a nonprofit necessarily to have a purpose driven, driven business. Yeah. And it's really cool to see how the marketplace is sort of shifting. I think it's being driven a little bit, um, by, circumstances and it's being driven quite a lot by some of these up and coming generations who are really demanding that of, of the brands that they, um, you know, that they frequent and that they use. And so you're yeah. seeing a lot of brands that historically maybe haven't, uh, thought that way. They've been, you know, kind of profit, pure profit first type of people, um, who are starting to, to re reconsider how they approach business. And, and, um, I'm hoping that that's a, a movement that, that, uh, continues to gain steam and, and, um, continues to, you know, to grow and, and blossom. 
So I think I read, um, I think I read just yesterday or the day before, so I always like to kind of keep up on, you know, like statistics and see where, you know, marketing is, you know, like what the marketing trends are. And I, I'm pretty sure it was either 71 or 72% of Americans are looking for that, you know, those purpose-driven companies there, you know, it's their expectation now yeah. that businesses are going to, you know, like have, have something that they that they stand for something that they're giving back to and, and, and something that, um, you know, it's that it's not just whatever product or service that they're, you know, that they're selling. Um, and I think that's a good thing. You know, I mean, I, you and I were talking about like in my first contracts, when I had my agency, I used to make people, you know, if they wanted to work with me, they had to do something for the community. Like, I didn't care what it was. It was like, whatever you're passionate about, whether it's, you know, um, rescue, you know, like, or kids or, you know, food or, you know, whatever, um, whatever it was, you know, vet veterans, like, but you had to do something. And, and if you didn't have a lot of money to give, then maybe you invested your time or maybe you, um, did a silent auction or maybe you, you know, whatever it was, it was, um, you know, as part of my value system as a, as an agency. And I think that it really, um, it really taught these businesses also that, you know, you can, it's, there's altruism in it, but, but you also can share, you know, like you can, you can convey that this, these, this is what you stand for as a brand and, you know, and help that, that nonprofit or that purpose, you know, whatever that purpose was like, help them get the, the word out too, right. that, um, you know, that, that they're available. So, um, I just went to, um, have you ever done any of those dinners, uh, those farm to table dinners out in, they're in, um, like unincorporated Boulder, like all the farms out, like kind of by Longmont. Well, I haven't done those, but I'm, I am on the board of go farm Colorado, which, uh, has a harvest dinner every year. And, Ooh. um, and they're a lot of fun actually. <laughs> so now see, I would like to do one of the, I love that kind of stuff. And yeah. I just went to one last week and they were, you know, like all of these organizations had like kind of come together. They were doing introductions about like these, you know, like um, it was like the watershed center, you know, like Mm -hmm. um, was part of it. And like, you know, so it wasn't just the farmer and it wasn't just the, you know, the, um, the person that was making, you know, like whatever, delicious cocktails they were making, but it was also, you know, like this water conservation and, and, you know, like, I love it when they have like even bees, you know, like they help yeah. people have bees and all that stuff. So, you know, like you can really, I think, build community around, around purpose and it just gives a good feeling. It's yeah, absolutely. Like, yeah. I think it just brings everyone together and, and it, it does, you know, it, it's, it's interesting because it, it does help people feel like at least some of the, some of the money that they're spending in, you know, for a service or a product is going back to a good cause. So it sort of has a, you know, a, a slightly dual effect in that it's doing some good, but it's also creating opportunity. I think more businesses will probably, at least hopefully start hopping on that, that bandwagon. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, it's, it's, it's one of those things where it's like um, with all the shakeup from, you know, COVID and, you know, like all of the the businesses that kind of had to readjust. I think that there is opportunity to, to tell that story now differently, to bring back in the fold because it, and Stu, you did some sessions for the, the small business development center, like in that, in that series. Um, remember we were talking about, people that had popped up like their online presence even. And then it's like, okay, well, you know, like in the beginning you can talk about like what's going on with your employees and you can talk about what's going on with, you know, your hours or are you shutting down or whatever. But then now, you know, that to that time has passed and, Mm -hmm. you know, it's like, so now what do you talk about? You have, you have your presence up. Like why not talk about, how to get involved, you know, like what, again, retell your story. What are your, what are your values as a business and, you know, nonprofit, for-profit, whatever, what's your, 
you know, like, where are you now and how are you fitting into, you know, like the ecosystem? And, you know, like, I think that it's, it's a great thing to share. And I think that people are interested in hearing, hearing about that, Um, you know, any really good story and, and the, you know, down to the micro, you know, like the individual that you affect, I think that that's, that's really important. And it, and it kind of, you know, like, has your employee done something nice or kind? Mm -hmm. Um, Have you, you know, like, did you do something for, um, you know, like, did you help out a family? Did you give, you know, something or, you know, like, have, are you adopting, um, you know, like some charitable giving that you weren't doing before because now you've moved on to the next, you know, the next thing. And I, and Mm -hmm. I think that, um, people, people find a lot of heart in that. Yeah. Storytelling is really interesting. And I think people get hung up on having, uh, you know, the perfect story or, or having to come up with the big idea themselves. And -hmm. there's so many ways to share stories that bring value to your particular um, audience that uh, the people I think don't always consider, you know, they, they think, Oh, I need to write a blog post or I need to, to craft this, you know, social media thing. And I just don't have any great ideas today. And, and frankly, there's so many stories going around and and you brought up a couple there that were, that are just great, uh, you know, storytelling fodder um, Mm -hmm. in terms of just what are your employees doing? And, you know, maybe one of your employees is, uh, you know, they do, I don't know, trapeze performances on the weekend and there there's a story. Um, and that's something that you can bring to the table and, and talk about and, and it demonstrates that you support your team. It demonstrates that you have interesting people on your team. It's, it doesn't always have to be some big, um, you know, tome of, of, uh, information that you're, that you're bringing as long as you're bringing value to the, to the audience. Is that, uh, do you have any other ideas around, around storytelling that you'd like to share? Yeah. I mean, I think that some of it is just also like, um, you know, some of it is, is, is just like, it could be funny, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It could be like something that, you know, like a little humor to tie in and, and, you know, I think of like storytelling is, you know, it's personal. And then some people are just naturals at it. Right. Like, and I hope that you can't hear my dog snoring, by the way. (laughs) (laughs) I have, I like, but I'm just looking at my dog. He's a good example of like, when I, I don't post that much on social, I tell people to do things. And then, you know, for me, it's like, Oh God, I have probably, I don't know how many pictures in my thing where I'm like, I'm going to post that. Like, that's going to be great. And then I psych myself out, but I have no problems posting something about my dog because he's a rescue dog and he's my heart and I absolutely love him. And he's part of my brand and he's part of, you know, he's part of, you know, who, who I am. So it cracks me up that he's like, like I said, kind of snoring next to me. (laughs) He's the easiest thing for, for me to talk about. And for some people, you know, it is like an animal, you know, like it is like their animal, their mascot right. or like an event that they've done. Um, I'll tell you, I, um, I think that, uh, I was talking to people last night, a couple of uh, women last night, and one of them was telling me the story about, um, her son is, um, I believe he's autistic and epileptic and, um, had to go get the COVID shot and right. had a, a big issue, you know, like it, it didn't work out and it was like tr- very traumatic. And then this employee, um, and I, and I don't know if it was Walmart or Walgreens, but you know, like one of these bigger chains, but like this one guy took the time to work with her and he made a party. He like blew up balloons and he like had little toys and all this stuff and made like this fun, like kind of party, you know, like this kind of party event Mm -hmm. for this, this child that was having a hard time adjusting. And I've told that story like three times now. So, you know, I'm a, I'm the queen of, if I hear somebody that's doing something good and they've done something that made someone's better day better, I, I like to, tell those stories and repeat that brand. And so it's, it's just really kind of like what, 
what makes you feel good about anything that's around your business. And it doesn't always have to be about the product that you're selling or the service that you're providing, but it can be about, you know, oh, oh, here's another good example. I had, I had somebody reach out to me yesterday and she, she sent a message and it said personal favor and it's a work colleague And she was asking strong women to write an inspirational message for a relative of hers who was going back to grad school, who had, you know, four children. And like, she just really had a tough road, but she was pushing to go back and get her master's degree. I loved that, like that she did that, that her, you know, like that she reached out to help her family member. Of course I had, you know, had to go write a note, you know, for this person I've never met, but like that just put some goodness out in the world. It made me feel good about her organization. It made me feel good about, you know, her as an individual and it had nothing to do with, you know, the, the organization that she works for. Um, It had everything to do with that connection and like the spirit of, you know, it made me feel good because it's like strong women. I was like, Oh, you think I'm a strong woman? You know I mean? So like, of course, like I got a little ego snack from the invite, but this, you know, this ability to, um, to help someone just made me feel good about her, which made me feel good about their organization. And they'll probably get some more money from me. Like, yeah, exactly. It's like, um, you know, we talk about creating relationships all the time. And I think with nonprofits, with for-profits, ultimately marketing is about relationship building. And mm-hmm. and sometimes that relationship is pretty short-lived and it's fairly easy to, uh, to get over a, a hurdle. Like for, for example, if you're, if you're purchasing, you know, some small ticket item, um, or it can be something that, that you need to just kind of nurture over time in order to get somebody to, um, you know, to take that next step to volunteer or to donate or to, you know, buy a, a larger ticket item. Um, right. but, but at the end of the day, um, you know, people certainly buy from businesses, but there are always people at the, at the end of, of those transactions. And so when, when any organization can, can kind of let that shine and, and demonstrate, um, you know, that they're there and they have, you know, cool things to share, whether those be, you know, very business specific or just, you know, just interesting information or, um, or just something fun and, and, and friendly, you know, that creates an opportunity to, to, uh, grow a relationship. And, and so, you know, whenever one is struggling with what kind of content to create, just, you know, get back into the last few days and think about some of the conversations that, that you've had and, and see how those could, uh, you know, help brighten somebody's day or, or bring them a little taste of something that they didn't, they didn't know about. Right. And, and I think also that, you know, that connection with, with, um, you know, relationship building and and then also being honest about, you know, where you, you know, where you are in your, in your space. I think that that's really important. I mean, like we're in marketing and so like marketers always talk about, you know, like we always talk about the upside and the, you know, I mean, like every, I used to laugh about, um, when I first started my business, it's just like, you know, you just always said, everything's great. You know, like, it's like, yeah. <laughs> it's like it doesn't matter if it is or not. Everything's great. Like, every, yeah. you know, like I'm doing well, I'm busy, you know, whatever. And I, and I think that now, um, there's also some storytelling in the vulnerability of, you know, like, you know, kind of just sharing, you're not alone in, in some, some of your, um, you know, in some of your emotions too, like, um, and then trying to give somebody like some uplift. So I don't know. I think that it's human. It's the human piece. Yeah. I think that really goes a long way. And, and I love, you know, even as a part of, you know, like imagery, obviously, you know, like sharing pictures and, and video and, and, um, I think that, that really helps to, to sell, you know, sell a business, sell, you know, like if you're trying to raise money, whatever that might be, people are so visual. Um, but I also feel like telling a story, like writing a card goes a long way these days and, you know, like not having everything digitally, but like having a little, um, my office mate, Lisa, you know, Lisa, 
Yeah, Lisa she, was on the show does. back in December. Yeah, she, yeah. <laughs> so she um, has a, a box of cards that she, you know, like she printed off from Canva and like she'll write, you know, just this like kind of gratitude note. And I always had the good intentions of, of doing it because, you know, I, I would, you know, I love the idea of it all. She's great at mailing stuff. Right. Um, but I think that that, you know, like it just makes someone's day. It just really, it really can. makes yeah. them feel so good. Like I thought of you, I just want to say, I'm grateful that, you know, for whatever, not just like you, I asked you for something, you gave me something, but Hey, you know what? I just was thinking of you, you know, you were on my mind or like, and then it could tie back into, you know, whatever you're doing. Like, you know, we just did this thing. I thought of you whatever. And it's not for the sale, but it's for the relationship. It's just the thanks for being you or thanks for what you did. And I remember you saying something that made me feel good one time or whatever it is. And that's a good you know story too. It makes people feel something. Yeah. And I, I like kind of going back to those roots. Yeah. I think that there are a lot of things that we've, we let fall by the wayside because they're not you know new and they've been done for years, but but a personal note is something that um, can really go a long way because at this point in time, they are fairly unique. Um, you know, it's, it's rare to get a handwritten uh, note of any kind, really. All <laughs> so right. it's, uh, it's, it's certainly a, a technique that I think that um, people should keep in their back pocket. And, and um, you know, at one point I, and I've kind of gotten away from this just because I forgot about it a little bit, but one of my kind of weekly KPIs was to send out, you know, three thank you cards or just three handwritten notes to clients or people that I'd talked with. And, um, and I think it can, it can really make a difference. Yeah. And even if, you know, for people that don't want to mail something like even a, you know, like even if you reached out, like if you go back to like some social channels and reach out on like LinkedIn or, you know, um, whatever, just for no other reason than you were on my mind. Like that seems to, that seems to stick to it. You know, um, have you ever had, you know, like the friend that's like, Oh gosh, thanks for, you know, like you're so busy or, you know, whatever. And it's like, I never want anybody to feel like I'm so busy that I don't have the, it's like almost the opposite of when I was in my, you know, like thirties, (laughs) <laughs> like wanted to be so busy. Now I'm like, no, 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 I'm totally here and chill and present. And, um, you know, and I want people to know that I want, I want them to know that, that I'm listening and, and more than ever now, you know, like that those little tokens mean a lot. And I think also providing the space for people to be heard and, um, you know, just, listen to a little bit goes a long way. And that's a relationship building thing. That's really effortless. You know, it doesn't cost a thing. Yeah, it doesn't cost anything anything to be present, right? That's right. We're we're here anyway. Yeah. Yeah. A little time. That's all. Yeah. Yeah, I I think those are great, great things for people to keep in mind. And, you know, particularly when, you know, relationships are are two way streets and the, and, and I believe that, a lot of salespeople fall into the trap of just always be selling, right? And that's right. The, the, the whole Glen Gary, Glen Ross thing is always <laughs> be closing, right? But uh, um, but ultimately, and steak knives. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, ultimately, I think you know, always be present would be a better motto for people because there's so much that you can pick up on and learn and then be able to share um, that if you're, if you are authentic and present and not just trying to, to get to that next, uh, you know, quota or or sales goal or whatever it is, um, you know, there's a lot to be said for just, just being there and just being present. Um, And people, people remember that particularly in the, in the fast paced world that we live in. Yeah. If you can remember a little bit about their life and what matters to them, I think, you know, I think that that, um, that goes a long way and, you know, sales has changed so much over the years. And, um, I'm actually working on a book, um, that hopefully will be out. It will be out, um, definitely by next July, but hopefully before then it's called, um, 
facing your fear of sales. And it's, you know, it's a guide to, to helping people kind of overcome those, you know, those doubts and uncertainties like, um, you know, imposter syndrome and Mm -hmm. not asking for what you want and, and all of that. But, but it ties into selling, you know, something that you feel like selling as a service to someone, you know, um, you know, like you're providing something that you know is going to help their day be better, whether that's a pair of shoes that's going to make them smile or yep. it's, you know, a whatever it might be, you know, like some sort of tool or service that's going to, you know, help them, you know, in their marriage or whatever it might, you know, whatever it might be, a tincture that's going to, you know, make them feel, you know, lofty, What whatever yep. it is that they're selling, but but doing it in a way that's, more, um, you know, I know this is good for, this is going to be good for you and it's authentic and it's, you know, it's like not, you know, as that pushy salesperson doesn't, it just doesn't carry as much weight anymore, but what does carry weight is follow up. And so those little touches that, you know, you and I've been talking about with those relationship builds, those, you know, those notes, those, you know, like I'm just reaching out, see how you're doing or how's your business going or, you know, I know that, um, your daughter's graduating and, you know, or I know that you, um, you know, like something in your life changed and, you know, I just wanted to check in like, that's, that's a great way to do business development. You just have to keep, you have to keep track of it. And so like, if you had a CRM system, you know, like some sort of way to manage your customer relationships so that you kind of can keep on top of it as we all you know, kind of get busy and distracted. I think that those are, you know, really kind of key, you know, key ways to, to, to be top of mind. And I'll tell you, like, I've been on both sides of the selling fence where I'm the one that's signing the purchase order and I'm the one asking for one. And, and the people that I liked got my money, (laughs) you know, like, they, they were stuck with me. I didn't let them, you know, like if there was a good salesperson, they had to hold, like they had to stay true and stay with me, like through the whole process. Like I didn't, they, they couldn't just like sell me and leave. So right. that was like their, you know, <laughs> the payment, <laughs> not including, you know, like the, you know, like what, what I uh, asked of them, but, um, but they definitely got like, they got that sale because they did a good job. They heard me, they made space. They, you know, like I'm, I'm very clear about what my, you know, like particularly when I was in corporate, like, you know, it's like, here are my problems. Here's my budget. And here's, you know, like I can't, I'm hold, giving it to you on a platter. Um, right. But those that listened and then also had some kindness and, you know, caring and were honest about it and taught me something uh, went a long way. And I would say that the teaching part is also really an important piece and also goes into storytelling and relationships. It's like anytime you can help teach someone something or like, you know, just share information or, or, you know, stories or whatever. I think that that's a big, you know, like that's, that's a win. Yeah, absolutely. We've been using loom a lot lately where if someone asks me how to do something, um, you know, I'll go do it for them, but also record what I did. So that they, you know, have an understanding of, of how to do it themselves next time, if that's what they would like to do. Um, and it's just, it's a really great tool and it's very in, inexpensive. Um, you know, I think it's like seven bucks a month or something like that, but I love um, it. Yeah. It can be used in a variety of different ways just to, just to create actual you know, again, it creates differentiation. It creates a personal touch. Like after, um, a lot of times after sales calls, um, I'll record a zoom or or I'm sorry, a loom message, and then you can embed it in your email. And it's just something that stands out. It's a little bit unique and it's a a little bit special. And I think that, that people like when, you know, when, when you can take a little bit of a special special touch or, or add a little special touch to, to how you engage and interact. It, it stands out. So it's just like Lisa and her, uh, her gratitude cards, um, you know, just doing little things like that. And that's where I think that, um, you know, really any, any business leader, whether that's a nonprofit or a for-profit business leader, there are opportunities to do those types of things every day. For example, um, one of my good friends, 
owns or is one of the founders of Scratch Labs, and mm -hmm. they do an amazing job of getting orders out like the same day. Um, so you, even even if you place orders late in the day, they have kind of a, a company policy to try and get those things out um, by the end of the day. Um, so oftentimes I'll order something, they're right in Boulder. Um, but if I order some of their product, I'll get it like the next day without even having, you know, expedited shipping or anything like that. And it's just amazing. But one of the little things that they do is they add, um, just a personal message, um, yes. every order that's just, you know, it's short. It's like, you know, I hope you enjoy the, hope you enjoy the, the drink mix or whatever it is. But, um, but you know, it, it does create that personal touch that I think a lot of a lot of places potentially miss out on just because they're, you know, they're trying to hurry too much or they don't don't think that it does matter. It's a little things. It's like that surprise and delight. Remember, we used to always talk about surprise oh, yeah. and delight. And it's like, I love that that little no, you know, it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be much or a little even like sometimes like people send like a little sticker or yeah you know, um, it goes, it goes a long way. I love the loom, um, loom as a tool to, um, reach out and do a little quick video for email. I've been telling, um, some of my clients about that because I always like those new things and it doesn't, to your point, doesn't cost much. You can record a personal message even instead mm -hmm. of, you know, like maybe your handwriting's not that good. Like maybe <laughs> it's like, you know what, when you're thinking of somebody, you can just send them a quick, like, Hey, I was just thinking of you. I just wanted to let you know, what's, you know, what's happening or, um, here's where I'm at. And, you know, I was thinking of you and, um, that time we talked about whatever, you know, I love, um, I love these little, it's like, you know, it doesn't have to be so major. And, you know, I mean, a lot of times like people will be like, what's the big idea or, oh, I have to do marketing. And it's like, they have this huge idea of what marketing is and, and, it doesn't have, it's, you know, sometimes it's just those subtle, those little subtle things. Mm -hmm. that it's the right time. You just hit them at the right time when, you know, like they were like, oh, you know what? Now that you've called or now that you've reached out, I do have something going on or yeah. like, or, you know what? That's so cool that you did that. You know what, you know, whatever. And it's, and it's, you know, like it's authentic. It makes you feel makes you feel on the receiving end good. And on the flip side, like it doesn't cost you much to, to do, you know, like little things like that. I think that's super cool. Oh, you know what I thought about too? Um, you know how you were asking about like examples of stories. Um, so I saw, um, I read, I don't know if you saw this, like it was like yesterday or the day before that um, I read about Southwest. So I fly Southwest a decent amount. Mm -hmm. Um, domestically and you know they've been getting such a backlash uh you know because they've been canceling flights and you know the whole travel industry you know um like airlines have been hit right and so it was it was a article about um the ceo of southwest like the you know like the flight attendants and the and the um pilots were complaining because they're tired you know they're frustrated they're tired they've been treated like crap you know like mm -hmm. they're overworked and everything and he he did uh two things and see i can remember this because it's just so simple he said he was sorry so he apologized to his staff um and and i just love the i'm sorry like i'm uh -huh. sorry that this has happened i'm sorry that it's been handled this way i'm sorry and i that that like made me feel good about that brand and the second thing was he cut back flights which for me, you know, I'm like, okay, I don't know what's going to happen in the fall, but like, of course, you know, it's like, are you cutting back flights? What does that mean for me? It might mean that I have to pay more or whatever, but I'm okay with it mm -hmm. because he's treating his employees well. And he said he was sorry. And that made me feel good about, like I said, about that brand. So I just want to throw that in. Cause I'm like, see, I'm telling you the story now. And I like, I remember it and I don't remember a lot, of <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but it was good. <laughs> a simple yeah. I'm sorry goes yeah. a long way. It it really does. I I think that you know he clearly listened. Um mm -hmm. you know there was a New York Times article actually just the other day about the whole airline industry and 
how challenging things are, particularly for the uh, flight attendants who are taking a you know a lot of the brunt of of people's frustrations, and, yeah. and it's really unfortunate that that's happening right now. Um, but they're you know they're short staffed, they're overworked, flights are, are delayed, people are angry, you know flight attendants and pilots are are having to work extra time. Well, maybe not pilots. They, they may have a little bit more ironclad, uh, uh, rest protocol, but, but certainly, you know, that industry has, has really been hit hard, um, by all of this. And, um, and yeah, just a CEO taking the time to actually acknowledge that there's a, a problem and, and apologize for, uh, you know, perhaps, you know, what, he may or may not be able to control that's affecting that and then, you know, offer up, up uh, tangible solutions. I think that those are, you know, those are the steps that are required to create, you know, good PR probably for, for those mm-hmm. of us who, who are, uh, you know, paying a little bit of attention to the, to the actual situation and, you know, at a, or, or perhaps even bad PR in that, in that, you know, people are going to be upset that there aren't more flights available, but, um, or the flights are more expensive, but, um, but at the end of the day, just really taking that time to notice and, and respond, I think, um, you know, a lot of companies out there would, would either pass the, pass the buck a little bit or, or just kind of ignore the situation, hoping that it would, it would go away. Bye. So, you know, there's opportunities, again, the opportunities for storytelling there um, to educate the public why, why they're making that, those types of decisions. Right. And it affects you. It does affect your mindset. And like, you know, and then there's the clients that will appreciate that, like me. And then they're there to your point, like there are other people that might, you know, like not be so happy because of the flight, you know, like less flights. Um, but, you know, with all with all the aggro people that have been flying, maybe that's not a bad thing that they don't <laughs> that they go to a different airline because like these people have been beaten literally, like beaten mm-hmm. down. And um, but you know, like branding and marketing and biz dev, it's all you know, it's all emotion based, right? So yeah, there's something that's funny that I I read just the other day about Steve Jobs and his attitude was that a home run is better than two doubles. And I tend, I actually wrote a blog post about this last year (laughs) when I, I, I'm sure if you go back to my blogs in late, late August or early September next last year, you'll see a a post about this because it's a kind of a daily stoic thing that I, that I read. And and so it came back up again, I think yesterday or the day before. Um, But in any event, he, he believed that a home run was better than, than two doubles. And I, I see where he's coming from in that respect, but I also think that we shouldn't begrudge the two doubles. We shouldn't begrudge right. base hits. And and it's the little things like that that, you know, they're certainly easier to, to get. It's it's a lot easier to come up with, with a few base hits than it is to, you know, to perhaps uh, figure out how to how to hit one home run. Um, but but they're also, you know, can be really effective and and you know those base hits actually can can turn into doubles or turn into triples and um and you never really know what's what's going to happen and so just being consistent and and trying to you know ke- just keep communications going and 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 be present um you know those are the qualities that I think every business should fall back on um you know particularly when when they're struggling to figure out how to how to afford some of the home run stuff that they might like to do because right. typically home run things uh, can be a little, a little more uh, cost costly than, than just, you know, consistency, um, you know, day after day. Right. I mean, it's like, you know, just keep, you know, each step moving forward. And I, and I also think that, you know, like when it, when it comes to like a home run versus like, you know, a couple of doubles or, you know, however, you know, you get to, you know, at the end of the day, like however you get to the end score, it's like, it depends on what your value system is too, because it's like, do you want to kill yourself to get to this? Like, are you going to burn out or is it a marathon, you know, where you're, you know, you're trying to do, you know, like you just like, 
just like you said, it's like, you know, that being present, keeping moving forward, like keeping those goals in mind, like being in alignment and like, just, you know, at the end you look back and you're like, look where I came from. Right. Like, and, you know, it's like, I don't know, like if you're burning out your staff, if you're burnt, you know, I mean like that's such a big deal right now. And, you know, like the turnover of people, you know, and like that whole movement of like, what was that YOLO movement? That's, that was, you know, the whole, you only live once right. thing. I mean, people are changing. I think that, um, you know, you have to keep all that in mind. Like this is not the same, you know, it's it, the day to day of, of people's lives is not the same anymore, you know, as, as it was. Yeah. So. That's absolutely true. Yeah. What, um, what are, are there any trends or any things that you've seen coming up in, in your space that, uh, that our listeners should be keeping an eye on in terms of, of storytelling or, or, you know, sales changes in, in, in the way sales are being done? Is there anything in particular that's exciting to you right now? Um, well, I do like that loom. Um, I do like the little short, you know, videos in an, in an email, um, to, to tell a story. Um, video to me is still really hot and I'm kind of, you know, I, I have been really kind of thinking about more of like, you know, like your assets being your own and, and really trying to push, push things out on YouTube more Mm -hmm. um, just because it's second largest search engine, obviously owned by Google. Um, And if you find some cadence with, you know, with that um, or, you know, or podcast, I think podcasting is, is great. Um, but I think that conversions with YouTube, um, have been going well and, um, you know, and Instagram too. I think that, um, Instagram people are feeling like good about brands, um, and their stories on that. Um, I would say that, um, you know, like I said, that human touch kind of coming back into the fold, not just asking for things, but telling, you know, like sharing and, and telling stories is, is, top of mind, um, and recommended. Um, but I also feel like it's like everything now because people's attention and focus is so short and it just keeps getting shorter. It seems like, I really feel like that clarity, like going, you know, like kind of going back, even if you've been in business for a while, going back and looking at your brand and looking at your messaging and like, and what, solution you're, you know, you're providing and making sure that's still the solution your customers need is, um, it's a great time to do it. Like, I think fall is a really great time to, to readjust the skirt. You know what I mean? It's like, you go, 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 go. And then it's like (laughs) this summer, you know, everyone, I don't know about you. Um, actually I know a little bit, you know, but, um, people were just getting out this summer. You know what I mean? It was like, Oh my gosh, like the summer was like a blink of an eye and now it's gone. And so, you know, like, now it's like we're coming into colder weather and everything. And it's like, it's, it's time to tell, it's time to tell some stories. Yeah. And I would say using video for that isn't video is not going to go away. There's video shorts. Like you see, you know, like I'm not a TikTok person. I'm just not like, that's just not my, uh, that's not my jam, but you see that YouTube is now doing those short videos. Mm-hmm. And I think that those for people that, you know, weren't living on TikTok. I think that that's kind of coming into play is put, putting out these shorts, um, mm-hmm. these short spots on YouTube. I think that that's going to be hot. I don't know what the heck happened to Clubhouse. That kind of came and went in a in a blip. <laughs> yeah, you, <heard laughs> you, know? you couldn't get away from it for for a, a minute. And then, <laughs> and then I haven't heard yeah, like yeah, a you're, the first you're the first person that's missing, mentioned clubhouse and right? well because i was thinking about like i always every time i do a marketing class i change it so i oh. you know like um i i always change the content because i'm like what's hot now or what's relevant now and how is that you know how's that going to help the the audience and um and I was looking at an old presentation and by old, I mean like six months yeah, ago. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it was like, there was one picture of one picture of clubhouse and it's like, nope, that went away. But uh, I like, I, I really like, you know, the blogs, the podcasting and the, and you know, YouTube or your website 
as your assets and like holding those and then using social really just as that distribution, yeah. um, that distribution piece, like not using that as like, that's where I'm putting all my content, but using right. it as the connector to bring people back to your website and knowing that your website, like has an intention, you know, I mean, like Stu, you, like you probably live and breathe this with your company, but like, you know, so many people are popping things up and then they just don't know why. Like right. they just feel like they should. It's like, don't do things because you feel like they should and don't, you know, pick channels because, you know, like, you know, because you feel like you have to pick yeah. things that are going to be a little bit more comfortable. And, you know, so if you like to talk and you don't like yourself on video, like yeah, as an don't, example, don't then do why YouTube. don't do YouTube? Like yeah. do, you know, maybe you like to write or maybe you do like podcasting or maybe there's little you know, those short little loom videos, even if it's screen grabs yeah. or something you took on your iPhone that you want to, you know, share. Um, I think that those things go, go a long way. I think inviting people to events and, you know, like kind of um, making people feel exclusive and like, you know, thought about, um, it also goes a long way because we're, we're seeing now, I don't know if you're seeing this too, but like I'm seeing a lot of these events again, yeah, you know, like these trade shows, yep. these concerts, like they're starting to pair back again. Here we go, you yeah. know, like with a variant and all of that. And so it's like, how can you still feel real and in touch? And so maybe, you know, like popping up some sort of networking event with like-minded peers. Um, I'll give you an example. Um, Lisa and I have this, this uh, group that she started actually a couple of months ago called women, women who rock. And it's, mm -hmm. you know, it started off with like 17 women, amazing women. And, you know, just getting together at the studio and having a nice dinner and wine and like, and then talking about change and like what, you know, what do people need and like, how can we contribute to the greater good as a, as a group? And right. now we're extending that to, you know, so that each person can invite someone and like really trying to create something. And that, you know, that's great it's great to just be human, to be present, be connected. And it's also, it's also great for networking and great for, yeah. you know, like all of those things too. Like, and to me, like that's secondary, but it's also, you know, it's valid because it's that connection that people haven't had in the last couple of years, like right. meeting new people of like mind um, in a, you know, in a fun setting. So I think that those, those types of things are also cool. Yeah, there's just so much, so many options out there, and one of the things we encourage, um, you know, all of our partners and clients to do is to make sure that they don't spread themselves too thin in terms of mm -hmm. thinking that they have to be on every single channel that's out there, and you know, coming at that from the perspective of where where does your ideal client or your your audience you know, where do they participate in, in, uh, information gathering and, and social activities. And you certainly would like to, um, you know, to show up there effectively, but also yeah. think about what you do well. And, and like you said, if you're, if you're not, um, comfortable on camera, then, um, then, you know, come up with, with a little different plan, do something that works for you, but also, uh, you know, reaches, reaches your audience in, in a, in a way that's going to bring value to them. Um, yeah. and, and I'd much rather see somebody do one thing well than, than, you know, seven things marginally. So, um, Oh, I 110% agree yeah. with you. 110% agree with you. Yeah. Like, we tend to overextend ourselves because, because we think, Oh man, I've got to be on all of these social channels and then we don't do anything. And right. I'd much Makes rather see, see people just, you know, just be great at one. And, and, you know, if you right. find that you're knocking that out of the park and have the capacity to do another channel, then add another one. But, uh, but, you know, thinking that you have to come out of the gate with, with, you know, eight amazing presences is, is, uh, it's, it's really hard to get that done. Right. And, you know, I mean, even, you know, from a, you know, like leadership marketing, where there's a, a gazillion tags for all kinds of marketing, right. But like that whole, you know, like if you like LinkedIn, you know, like some people like LinkedIn and they're B2B and like mm -hmm. they can post, you know, like they post and share things and, and, you know, like that gets out there too. I think that that, um, you know, like that still has a place, yeah. uh, for sure. Um, you know, I don't know about, 
I've had people come to me and like, they're so insistent on wanting to do paid advertising and, mm-hmm. you know, and so LinkedIn ads, I mean, like they have like some decent traction, I suppose, but you know, at the end of the day, like you're absolutely right. I mean, pick what you're comfortable with. Don't pick everything. And, and, you know, and then just dig a little deeper in that, you know, instead of trying yeah. to be everything to everyone and, and live on, you know, channels that are noisy to begin with. I was listening to a podcast yesterday. It was Dean Jackson's More Cheese, Less Whiskers podcast, which is actually what inspired me to start this podcast uh, about about a year ago, uh, actually 11 months ago. And Oh no, I was on that actually a year ago. So, wow. and then I started this one uh, in, in late September last year. But uh, one of the things that Dean was talking about on the show was you have three things that we, that we want to get done and let's just call it, you know, marketing scheme A, B, and C. And you can try and multitask. And let's say you have, you know, f- each one is going to take nine hours um, or let's just make, yeah, let's make it nine hours. So what you could do is tackle, um, tackle the first one for three hours and then start tackling the second one for three hours. And then, you know, the third week you tackle the third one for three hours. And then you go back to the first one and you do your next round of, of three hours on that one. And then you move to the second one and then you move to the third one. And, and at the end of all of this, you've, you know, you've invested all this time, but if you were just to focus on one thing, if you just did number one first and did you know, the three hours, three weeks in a row, that one would be done and would be making you money. Mm-hmm, then yeah. move to the second one and do that one in completion. And then now you have two out there making you money. Um, and then the third one, you uh, tackle that one third and, and, you know, you put your nine hours into that one and, and all, now you have all three done, but instead of waiting the 27 hours or whatever my math is on all of that <laughs> to, to get all three done at once, um, you can take advantage of, of getting kind of those incremental wins and, um, and making sure that you're not multitasking, making sure you're, you're focused on one, one thing at a time. And, and I think that marketing, um, you know, even, even if you're looking at channels, if, if you can just kind of embrace one channel and, and get it up and running and get it, get it humming along, it can, it can actually coast and continue to make you a little bit of money, um, or, or bring in eyeballs or whatever it is that you're hoping to do there with significantly less effort than if you're trying to get, you know, three or four going at one time. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and I would say like, trying to capture, you know, um, trying to build your list, like your, your email, you know, your email list or something that like, again, is an asset to you mm-hmm. that it doesn't matter if the platform changes, it, you know I mean? It's like yeah. you have that as a connector. I think that that's also something that's like nothing new, but something forgotten. Um, yeah. cause it's not as sexy. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it isn't, but it has high conversion and it's cheap yeah. or, you know, cheaper than some of these other, you know, some of these other activities, um, for sure. And then, you know, like, and I still think that, you know, like if you're going to pick like if somebody that's like brick and mortar, for example, or, you know, somebody that has, you know, a, a space, like, like Google, my business is still pretty, you know, like that's still pretty effective too, I would say. Yeah, I think local local search is a big thing right now for for small businesses, particularly brick and mortars. Yeah, it's amazing to me the people that forget. And like, that's another thing. It's like you have to invest your time to build, you know, like to have that up and, and, you know, like the keys to just to have as much information as possible filled out. Um, But it's really going to help with search optimization. And, and uh, it's, it's something that's like, for people that have restaurants and things like that's an, you know, it's a given, but like for other, you know, organizations, like it's still a value. Yep. And, um, yeah, yeah. if you're a local business or organization that does, does work locally and, you know, maybe even tries to get donations locally, it's Google, my business is, is a huge component to your, your success. Just, they, yeah. they continue to, to fine tune the algorithm and they also continue to fine tune the, the display. And at this point, at this point, the first organic search t- typically falls into about the 11th thing on the page. 
Mm -hmm. Um, There are paid ads up top. Then there's usually a local pack, which has three or four, uh, you know, results um, uh, in in that section. And then you you're really starting to see big brands come in and swoop up the first couple positions of Mm -hmm. of organic. And so you know the first legit organic um, you know, small business type opportunity, you know, tends to show up well below the fold. And so getting up into that three pack can be, you know, it could be night and day, uh, difference in, in visibility. Right. I think that that's, yeah, that's like a little, you know, one of those, like, you, you know, it's like, did you think of this? Like, oh yeah, that's a good, you know, like, um, like I said, not new, but still good keeper. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. So if people were interested in learning more about what you do and, and um, what you can do to help their businesses thrive, where would they go to find out about you? So they can go to um, my website, which is uh, appleandarrowsales.com. Um, I think a schedule, you know, anybody can schedule a 15 minute talk with me. I'm happy to chat and um, give some advice for anybody that needs it. Um, you can find me on LinkedIn at, um, at Susie Bonson, which is S-U-Z-I-B-A-H-N-S-E-N, crazy name. Um, and then I, I would say those are like two great, two great ways. I have to get my Google My Business <laughs> page up. <laughs> I'm like talking about I'm like, yeah, that's on my list. So yeah, maybe you'll sure. be able to find me that way. But those are the, those are the easiest. I think those are the easiest ways to reach out and, and, um. Uh, connect. Well, um, I would encourage everyone to reach out. You're, I always love hanging out with you and getting to, to chat. And I think that um, you've just done so many cool things and you're helping people out. And it's, it's fun to, fun to reconnect here on the show. You are the best too. And, and by the way, I'm ripping you back into this digital marketing course that I'm putting together for the SBDC. So oh, fun. Um, you will be working together um, hopefully this fall as soon as I can um, get it out there. So, well, I, I would be excited and thrilled to be a part of that. I love having these conversations and, you know, especially with wonderful people like you, Susie. Um, but one of the things that I really want to do is foster action. And Uh so, you know, listening and talking and, and, you know, getting a bunch of good ideas is, is always great, but, but I really want to people to take action after uh, listening to the show. And if there's anything that you would have people do after listening to our, our talk today, what, what would you have them do? You know, just from a human standpoint, I would say, say something nice to a stranger. Um, because I feel like, I feel like uh, people, you know, everybody needs to hear something nice uh, during the day. So I would say that. And then I would also say like, find if you haven't found, you know, um, you know, a nonprofit or a charitable source um, to give to, um, then get involved and be part of your community and, and uh, be connected. So I love it. I would encourage everyone to go do both of those things. And thank you again for being on the show today. It was lovely talking with you. Oh, you're the best too. Thanks so much. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. I'll talk to you soon. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. All right, there you have it. Another great episode of Relish This. Thanks for listening. If you would like to learn more about how to apply the audience engagement cycle to expand your organization's mission, there are two things you can do. Right now, you can go to missionuncomfortablebook.com to download a copy of my book. And while you're there, you can get your purpose-driven marketing score to see where you can unearth some gold for your organization. If you'd like to listen to back episodes of the show or sign up to be a guest, go to relishstudio.com slash podcast. That's it for this week. I'll be back next week for another great episode of Relish This.